mother-in-law hired a private detective to prove my infidelity and then tried to kidnap my son. I'm a 32-year-old woman named Jessica and have been married to my husband Kevin, who is 35, for the last five years. We recently welcomed our first child, a little boy named Ethan. What should have been the happiest time of our lives turned into an ongoing nightmare because of my mother-in-law, Margaret. Margaret, who is 61, never liked me from the start. When Kevin first introduced me to his parents, Margaret made it clear that she didn't think I was good enough for her son. I come from a humble background, while Kevin's family is quite affluent. Margaret often made snide comments about my job as a teacher, saying that Kevin could have done better than someone who just babysits for a living. But Kevin and I fell in love despite her disapproval, and we got married anyway. Kevin and I met at a local community center fundraiser. He was attending with some friends, and I was there volunteering as part of a teaching initiative. We clicked immediately because we both loved giving back to the community. Kevin was different from the other guys I had met. He was genuinely kind and didn't care that I wasn't wealthy. He admired how hard I had worked to become a teacher. Our relationship progressed quickly, and within a year, we were discussing marriage. That's when I first met Margaret. Kevin had warned me that his mother could be difficult, but nothing prepared me for the reality. The first time I visited their home, Margaret looked at me as if I were an intruder. She barely acknowledged me when I tried to shake her hand. And during dinner, she bombarded me with questions about my family, my career, and my future plans. With each answer I gave, her frown deepened. After dinner, I overheard her telling Kevin that he could do much better than me, and she even suggested that he should date the daughter of a family friend who was studying to become a doctor. Kevin defended me, but I knew from that moment that Margaret would be a problem in our lives. Despite Margaret's objections, Kevin and I got engaged a few months later. Margaret was not pleased and tried to convince Kevin to postpone the wedding, saying we were rushing into things. When that didn't work, she tried to take over the wedding planning, pushing for a grand, expensive event that was beyond our budget. Kevin stood firm, and we ended up having the intimate ceremony we wanted. Margaret was furious and gave a speech at the reception where she passive-aggressively welcomed me to the family, implying that I had a lot to learn if I wanted to fit in. It was humiliating, but Kevin and I refused to let it ruin our day. After our wedding, Margaret continued to cause trouble. She would show up at our house unannounced, criticizing everything from our choice of furniture to the meals I cooked. On one occasion, she even brought along a woman she wanted Kevin to meet, pretending it was just a coincidence that they ran into each other. Kevin was livid and didn't speak to his mother for weeks after that incident. Despite all this, Kevin and I were happy. We both had fulfilling jobs, Kevin was making a name for himself in his family's business, and I had just been promoted to head teacher at my school. We decided to wait until we were financially stable before starting a family. When we finally announced that I was pregnant, Margaret didn't react with joy. Instead, she made a comment about hoping the baby would take after Kevin's side of the family. She insisted on attending every doctor's appointment, even though we repeatedly asked for privacy and questioned every decision we made, from the choice of doctor to the vitamins I took. Kevin called our families to share the good news and to let them know when we'd be returning home. Margaret immediately announced that she would be coming over to help, despite our request for some time alone as a new family. When we arrived home, we were shocked to find that all my belongings had been thrown out onto the front lawn, my clothes, books, and teaching materials were scattered everywhere for the neighbors to see. Margaret was standing in the doorway with a smug look on her face. I was devastated, and Kevin was furious. He told me to stay in the car with Ethan while he confronted his mother. As he approached her, Margaret started shouting accusing me of infidelity. She screamed, How dare you bring that child into this house? I always knew you weren't good enough for Kevin. And now I have proof. That baby isn't his no one in our family has ever looked like that. Kevin was stunned. He tried to reason with her. But Margaret was beyond listening. She was convinced that I had cheated on Kevin and was now trying to trap him with another man's child. I got out of the car, holding Ethan and begged Margaret to stop. But she only grew more aggressive. Kevin had had enough. He told Margaret to leave our house immediately. When she refused, saying she was only there to help her son and grandson, completely contradicting her earlier accusations, Kevin grabbed her suitcase and threw it outside, telling her she was no longer welcome in our home. Margaret was stunned. She had clearly expected Kevin to take her side, but instead, he firmly told her to leave. Realizing she had lost, Margaret stormed off, shouting that she would return to save Kevin and Ethan from me. After she left, Kevin and I took Ethan inside and tried to process what had just happened. Kevin was deeply hurt by his mother's action. She couldn't believe she would accuse me of cheating and try to kick me out of our home. We spent hours gathering my belongings from the yard and cleaning up the mess. 
Meanwhile, Kevin's phone kept buzzing with messages from Margaret and other family members, who had already heard her distorted version of the events. That night, after Ethan finally fell asleep, Kevin and I made a difficult decision. We agreed that Margaret would not be allowed to visit our home or see Ethan until she apologized and demonstrated that she could behave appropriately. Kevin also decided that he would take a break from speaking to his mother. The next day, I called my parents to tell them what had happened. They were outraged and offered to come stay with us to help out, which we gratefully accepted. It's been two weeks since that day, and the situation remains tense. Margaret continues to call and text sometimes apologizing, other times accusing me again. Kevin's father is trying to mediate and make peace, but we're standing our ground. Some of Kevin's relatives think we're being too harsh on Margaret, saying she was only trying to protect Kevin. Others, however, understand our position and support our decision to keep Margaret at a distance until she can be civil. I feel terrible for Kevin. This should be a joyful time as we adjust to life with our new baby. But instead, we're dealing with family drama and his mother's betrayal. I'm trying to be there for him while also taking care of Ethan. But it's clear that this is taking a toll on Kevin. He's angry and hurt, just as I am. I've always tried to be a good wife to Kevin, and now I'm doing my best to be a good mother to Ethan. Margaret's attempt to destroy our family is almost too much to bear. This whole situation is overwhelming. I'm dealing with the emotional roller coaster of having a new baby, and on top of that, I'm facing the stress of family conflict. Kevin is trying to be strong for me and Ethan, but I can see the strain this is putting on him. We're both exhausted and not just from taking care of a newborn. Kevin has even considered getting a restraining order against Margaret, but he's worried about how his family would react. We don't want to make things worse, but we're at a loss for what to do next. We've talked about moving to a different town to get away from all the drama, but we love our jobs and our home. It doesn't seem fair that we should have to leave everything behind because of Margaret's behavior. Kevin tried to reach out to his father, hoping he could talk some sense into Margaret, but his father doesn't want to get involved. He's accustomed to letting Margaret have her way to keep the peace. I've always valued family, but now I'm questioning whether it's worth maintaining a relationship with someone who can be so hurtful, even if that person is my mother-in-law. Kevin and I have discussed going to counseling to help us navigate this difficult time. We know we need to stay united, but it's hard when we're both so worn out and upset. Plus, with a newborn, finding time for counseling is a challenge. Things took a turn for the worse last week when Margaret showed up at Kevin's office, causing a scene. She was crying and telling everyone that Kevin was keeping her grandson away from her. Kevin's co-workers were shocked, and his boss wasn't pleased with the disruption. Kevin had to explain the situation to his boss, which was both embarrassing and stressful. Then, Margaret started calling my workplace, telling my colleagues that I was an unfit mother who had trapped her son with another man's child. My boss was understanding, but it was humiliating, and I was worried it might affect my job. Kevin's sister Lisa got involved next. Initially, she sided with Margaret, believing the lies about me cheating. She called Kevin and said some incredibly hurtful things accusing him of abandoning his real family for me. This devastated Kevin because he and Lisa had always been close. But then something surprising happened. Lisa came over one day while Kevin was at work, wanting to see Ethan for herself. I was nervous, but I let her in. As soon as she saw Ethan, her attitude changed completely. She could see how much he resembled Kevin and realized that Margaret had been lying. Lisa apologized to me and promised to speak to the rest of the family on our behalf. She became our biggest ally defending us against Margaret and the others. This sparked a major rift within Kevin's family, with people taking sides. Margaret was furious that Lisa was now supporting us, and began spreading rumors that Lisa was just jealous because she wasn't married and didn't have children of her own. This deeply hurt Lisa. The situation escalated when Margaret hired a private investigator to follow me, convinced that I was still cheating. The investigator tracked my every move from work to the grocery store to my doctor's appointments. It made me feel violated and scared. When Kevin found out, he was enraged and confronted Margaret, threatening to get a restraining order if she didn't stop. Margaret cried and claimed she was just trying to protect her son, but Kevin wasn't buying it anymore. The final straw came when Margaret attempted to file for grandparents' rights, trying to secure legal visitation with Ethan. Thankfully, the lawyer told her she had no case, especially since Ethan was so young and she had never even met him. All this stress began to take a toll on my health. I struggled to produce enough milk for Ethan and started losing weight rapidly. My doctor became concerned about postpartum depression, and Kevin insisted I take some time off work to rest and recover. Finally, Kevin's father realized how serious the situation had become. 
He came to our house and apologized for not stepping in sooner. He promised to handle Margaret and fully supported our decision to keep her away from our family. Now, four months after Ethan's birth, things are starting to settle down. Margaret has been calling and texting less frequently, and most of Kevin's family understands our stance. Lisa visits us regularly and has become a wonderful aunt to Ethan. So, Reddit, am I wrong for standing by Kevin when he kicked his mother out and refusing to let her see her grandson? It's been nine months since I last posted, and so much has changed. I want to thank everyone for their advice and support. It's been a challenging journey, and I'm grateful for this community. Here's what's been happening. Margaret's behavior only got worse after my last post. She started visiting our neighbors, spreading lies about us. She told them we were neglectful parents and that they should call child services on us. Some neighbors believed her and began giving us the cold shoulder, while others warned us about what she was saying. It was embarrassing and stressful to have our personal lives aired out like that. One day Margaret came to our house while Kevin was at work. She pounded on the door and yelled for hours. I was terrified, holding Ethan and trying to keep him calm while Margaret screamed outside. I called the police, but Margaret left just before they arrived. The officers took a report but said there wasn't much they could do since she was gone. After that, we decided to install security cameras around our home. The stress began to affect Kevin's work performance, and his boss called him in for a talk, expressing concern that Kevin seemed distracted and that his work was slipping. Kevin had to explain everything that was happening with his mother, and while his boss was sympathetic, he warned Kevin that he needed to refocus on his job, or it could impact his position in the company. This added financial stress to an already tense situation. My parents came to stay with us for a while to help out. They were great with Ethan and gave Kevin and me a chance to rest and spend some time together. But Margaret didn't like this one bit. She started spreading rumors that my parents were trying to turn Kevin against his real family. She even called my dad's workplace, claiming he was an alcoholic who shouldn't be trusted around children. This was a complete lie, of course. But my dad had to answer questions from his boss, which was humiliating for him. Things took a turn for the worse when Kevin's cousin Beth got married. We weren't invited to the wedding because Margaret had told the entire family that we didn't want to be involved anymore. She spread the lie that we thought we were better than everyone else now that we had a baby. Kevin was heartbroken. He had been close to Beth growing up and was looking forward to attending her wedding. Lisa, who had been supportive of us, tried to stand up for us at the wedding. She told everyone the truth about what Margaret had done, how she had accused me of cheating and tried to kick me out of my own home. This led to a huge argument at the reception, with some family members siding with us and others believing Margaret's lies. The fight got so intense that Beth, the bride, ended up in tears, and her new husband was furious. He kicked everyone out of the reception early. Beth later called Kevin in tears, saying that her wedding had been ruined because of our family drama. Kevin was devastated, even though none of this was his fault. After the wedding fiasco, Kevin's family was deeply divided. Some members stopped talking to us altogether, blocking us on social media and ignoring our calls. Others reached out to apologize and let us know they believed us. Kevin's uncle, George Margaret's brother, was particularly supportive. He told us he always knew his sister could be difficult, but he never imagined she would go to such lengths. Margaret then tried a new tactic. She started being overly nice. She sent gifts for Ethan and cards saying she was sorry. She even sent Kevin and me gift cards for fancy restaurants suggesting we have a nice date night on her. At first we were suspicious, but part of us hoped that maybe she had finally realized how wrong she had been. Kevin especially wanted to believe that his mother had changed. He missed having a normal relationship with her. Against my better judgment, we agreed to let Margaret visit. But with strict conditions, she could only come when both Kevin and I were home, and she couldn't be alone with Ethan. At first everything seemed fine. Margaret was polite to me and doted on Ethan. She even brought a homemade meal, knowing how much Kevin loved her cooking. But it was all an act. On her fourth visit, while Kevin went to the bathroom, Margaret tried to make a run for it with Ethan. She had her car running in the driveway and a packed bag hidden in her purse. If my mom hadn't been there to stop her, she might have succeeded in taking our son. We immediately called the police, and this time, they arrested Margaret for attempted kidnapping. Seeing his mother handcuffed and taken away in a police car was devastating for Kevin. He broke down in tears feeling like he had failed both his mother and his son. Margaret spent a night in jail, and the shock of being arrested seemed to finally wake Kevin's father up to how serious the situation was. He visited us the next day, looking exhausted and sad. He told us he was filing for divorce from Margaret and apologized for not believing us sooner. He asked if he could still be part of Ethan's life and promised to respect our boundaries.
After a long discussion, we agreed to let him visit, but we made it clear that he couldn't share any information with Margaret. Kevin was relieved that his dad finally saw the truth, but he was also heartbroken that his family was falling apart. He started going to therapy to cope with all the emotions, and it's been helping him a lot. As for me, I've gone back to work part-time. It was hard leaving Ethan at first, but it's been good to have something else to focus on. My co-workers have been incredibly supportive, especially after hearing about all the drama with Margaret. My boss even allowed me to adjust my schedule so I could be home when Kevin's dad visits Ethan, which has been a huge help. Ethan is doing great, despite all the chaos around him. He's growing fast and looks more like Kevin every day. It's bittersweet knowing he won't have a relationship with his grandmother, but we know it's for the best. We're doing everything we can to surround him with love and positivity. We've grown much closer to Lisa through all of this. She comes over often and is wonderful with Ethan. She's been a rock for Kevin, helping him remember the good times with their mom while also supporting his decision to keep Margaret away. Lisa even stood up to Margaret when she tried to turn Lisa against us again. Margaret claimed that Lisa was jealous of us and didn't have her own family, which was why she was siding with us. When that didn't work, Margaret went as far as planting drugs in Lisa's car and calling the police. Fortunately, the officers were suspicious of the anonymous tip and didn't charge Lisa, but the incident was terrifying and humiliating for her. The false drug accusation caused problems at Lisa's Jober boss heard the rumors, and despite the lack of evidence, decided to let Lisa go to avoid any potential issues. Lisa was devastated, having worked hard for her position, and now found herself unemployed because of her mother's lies. We offered to let Lisa stay with us while she looked for a new job, and she accepted. It's been nice having her around, though our house is starting to feel a bit crowded. Kevin's father is doing his best to make things right. He offered to pay for family therapy for all of us, including Margaret, if she agreed to participate. After much consideration, Kevin and I decided to give it a try, but only if Margaret agreed to get help for her behavior first. We had our first therapy session last week, and it was incredibly tough. Margaret cried a lot saying she just wanted her family back and talked about how lonely she had been since Kevin's father left her. The therapist was firm, telling Margaret that she needed to take responsibility for her actions and acknowledge the harm she had caused. Margaret didn't like hearing that. She accused the therapist of taking our side and stormed out of the session. Kevin was disappointed, feeling like we had taken a step backward. After that disastrous therapy session, a few of Kevin's aunts and uncles reached out to us, saying they had heard about what happened and were sorry for believing Margaret's lies. They asked if they could visit and meet Ethan. We're considering it, but after all the hurt we've experienced, it's hard to trust anyone right now. We've also started discussing changes to our wills. We want to ensure that if anything happens to us, Margaret won't have any chance of getting custody of Ethan. We're thinking of naming my parents and Lisa as guardians. So that's where things stand now. In some ways, things are better. But the situation is still complicated. Margaret continues to cause problems, but we're stronger as a couple and as a family. Any advice on how to move forward and heal as a family would be greatly appreciated. We're taking it one day at a time, but sometimes it feels like we're still stumbling in the dark. Thanks for listening and for all your support. It's been 10 months since my last update, and a lot has happened since then. First, I want to thank everyone who has reached out with advice, shared similar experiences, or offered words of encouragement. It means more to us than I can express. Here's what's been going on. Kevin's job is now in jeopardy, his company is undergoing some restructuring, and there's a possibility that he might be laid off. We're really worried about this, and have been trying to save as much money as possible, but it's difficult with all the legal expenses we've had to cover because of Margaret. Somehow, Margaret found out about Kevin's potential job loss, we suspect one of Kevin's colleagues must have told her. As soon as she heard, she started bombarding us with calls and messages, offering to help us financially if Kevin lost his job. We know she's just trying to worm her way back into our lives, so we haven't responded to any of her messages. Margaret then started showing up at Kevin's office, insisting that she needed to talk to him about urgent family matters. She did this so often that Kevin's boss eventually had to tell her to stop coming to the office. This has only made things harder for Kevin at work, and we're concerned that it might increase the chances of him being laid off. All of this stress is starting to affect Ethan too. He's been having nightmares, and has become anxious whenever we leave him with a babysitter. He cries and clings to us, not wanting us to go. To make matters worse, we've run into new legal issues. Margaret somehow discovered that we were planning to update our wills to ensure she wouldn't have any legal claim to Ethan if something happened to us. She was furious and is now threatening to take us to court if we try to change the wills. 
She's telling everyone we know that we're mentally unstable from all the stress and that we can't make sound decisions. Our lawyer has reassured us that Margaret doesn't have any legal standing to contest our wills, but it's still a huge worry. Kevin's father is trying to support us, but he has his own problems to deal with. His divorce from Margaret is turning out to be a messy and drawn-out process. Margaret is making all sorts of wild accusations against him and is trying to take a large portion of his retirement savings. We want to help Kevin's father as much as we can, but our finances are stretched thin and we're just barely keeping our heads above water. So that's where things stand now some aspects of our lives have improved, but the situation remains incredibly complex. It's been exactly two years since my original post, and a lot has happened. I finally found the time to update this account, and I want to thank everyone who has supported us along the way. Your advice and encouragement have been invaluable to us during this incredibly challenging time. Here's what's been going on. Kevin lost his job. The company ended up laying off a significant portion of its staff, and Kevin was one of the employees let go. This was a heavy blow to us. We had some savings, but between the legal fees and the everyday costs of raising a child, it wasn't enough. I started taking on more shifts at the school, but it has been a struggle. Of course, Margaret saw this as an opportunity to swoop in and save us. She began calling and texting Kevin relentlessly, offering financial help and saying how she could support us if we just let her back into our lives. We ignored her at first, but she wouldn't stop. She even showed up at our house one day with a check in hand, trying to force her way in. Kevin slammed the door in her face, and I couldn't have been prouder of him for standing his ground. But Margaret didn't back down. She began spreading rumors that we were struggling financially and unable to care for Ethan. She even went as far as calling Child Protective Services, claiming we couldn't afford to feed our son. CPS came to investigate, and although they quickly realized that Ethan was well cared for, the experience was humiliating and frightening. Kevin's father stepped in to help us financially, and while we were hesitant to accept his assistance, we knew we needed it. However, we felt terrible about taking the money because we knew Kevin's father was also struggling with his divorce from Margaret, which had become even more contentious. Then things got even more chaotic. Margaret somehow got hold of Kevin's resume and started sending it out to various companies, pretending to be him. She even created fake email accounts in his name. Kevin started receiving calls for job interviews he had never applied for, and we had to spend hours contacting these companies to explain the situation. Some companies thought Kevin was unstable and blacklisted him, making his job search even more difficult. Lisa has been our rock through all of this, helping with Ethan, assisting Kevin in his job hunt, and running interference with the rest of the family. But the stress is taking a toll on her too. We recently discovered that she's been taking medication for anxiety to cope with everything that's been happening. We feel awful that our problems are impacting her so much. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. Margaret started a smear campaign against us on social media. She created a Facebook page called Justice for Grandma, which has since been taken down, where she posted all kinds of lies about us. She accused us of being abusive parents, claimed that we were turning Ethan against her, and even said that Kevin was an alcoholic he's not, and that I was having an affair with Kevin's former boss, Im not, and Kevin doesn't even have a boss right now. Some of Kevin's relatives believed her leash, his aunt started leaving nasty comments on my Facebook posts and his cousin confronted Kevin at the grocery store, yelling at him for abandoning the family. We've had to block several people, and it feels like we're losing what little support system we had left. But the worst was yet to come. One day we received a call from Ethan's daycare. They told us that Margaret had shown up, claiming she had the right to pick up Ethan. Thankfully, the daycare staff knew about the situation and refused to let her take him, but it terrified us. We had to pull Ethan out of that daycare and find a new one, which was a nightmare given our financial situation. After that incident, we decided it was time to take legal action. We filed for a restraining order against Margaret. The court hearing was brutal. Margaret played the role of the heartbroken grandmother perfectly, crying and claiming that she just wanted to see her grandson. But our lawyer presented all the evidence of her harassment and the attempted kidnapping, and the judge granted the restraining order. We thought that would be the end of it, but Margaret just became sneakier. She started sending people to harass us on her behalf just as she always had. Meanwhile, Kevin was still struggling to find a job. The fake applications Margaret had sent out really messed things up for him, but he finally managed to secure a part-time position at a local bookstore. It's not enough to cover all our expenses, but it's a start. I've been working extra hours at the school, but with all the legal fees, we're just barely scraping by. Last month, we had a scare when Ethan got sick. He had a high fever and was vomiting, and we had to rush him to the emergency room. The whole time I was terrified that Margaret would somehow find out and show up at the hospital. 
Thankfully, that didn't happen, but the fear was very real, and the medical bills were another financial blow we couldn't afford. Kevin's father's health has taken a turn for the worse due to the stress of the divorce and everything with Margaret. He had a mild heart attack last week, and while he's recovering, it was a wake-up call for all of us. Kevin feels an enormous amount of guilt, as though all of this is somehow his fault. I keep telling him it's not, but I know he's struggling to cope with everything that's happened. We're trying to support Kevin's father as much as we can, but it's difficult when we're barely managing ourselves. Lisa has been staying with him, helping him recover, but that means she's not around as much to help us with Ethan, which has made things even more challenging. Of course, Margaret is using Kevin's father's health issues to play the victim once again. She's been posting on social media about how she should be allowed to visit her dying husband he's not dying and how cruel we all are for keeping her away. Some people have bought into her act and have been sending us angry messages. We've had to change our phone numbers yet again because Margaret kept finding ways to contact us, no matter how many times we blocked her. It's frustrating to have to constantly update our contact information with work, Ethan's daycare, and everyone else but it's a small price to pay for some peace of mind. So that's where we stand now, still struggling, still fighting, but also growing and healing. Margaret continues to cause problems, but we're getting better at handling them. We're stronger as a couple and as a family than we've ever been. We're focusing on our little family, on healing, and on building a happy life despite everything. Edit. Just a small update, I didn't want to make a full post about it, but Kevin finally got a lead on a better job. It's not in his original field, but it's a full-time position with benefits, which would be a huge help for us. He has an interview next week, and while we're trying not to get our hopes up too much, it's hard not to. This job could really turn things around for us. Wow, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of support and kindness we've received since my last post. So many of you have reached out through comments and messages, offering advice, sharing similar experiences, and just sending words of encouragement. It truly means the world to us. I've read every single message even if I haven't been able to respond to them all. Your support has been a bright light during some really dark times. Some of you have even offered to help us financially or with job leads for Kevin. While we haven't accepted any financial help, your generosity has touched us deeply. Now onto the update, it's been about a few weeks since my last post, and I wanted to share what's been happening with our family. First, some good news Kevin got the job he interviewed for. It's not in his original field, but it's a stable position with good benefits. The pay isn't as high as his old job, but it's enough to keep us afloat. We're so relieved to have a steady income again, and Kevin's really enjoying the work, which is wonderful to see after all the stress he's been under. Unfortunately, Margaret hasn't given up. She's gotten more subtle in her attacks, but they're still happening. We found out that she's been sending anonymous letters to our neighbors, telling them we're bad parents and that they should keep an eye on us. Most of our neighbors are aware of the situation and have come to us about it, but it's still frustrating to feel like we're constantly under a microscope. Kevin's father is doing better health-wise, but the divorce from Margaret is still dragging on. Lisa has finally found a new job and moved out of our place, but she still comes over often to help with Ethan. We've also made some tough decisions recently. We've decided to move to a new town about four hours away. I know we had originally said we didn't want to move, but with everything that's happened, we feel like it's the best choice for our family. Kevin can transfer to a branch of his new company in the new town, and I've already secured a teaching position at a school there. It's scary to leave our support system behind, but we feel like we need a fresh start away from Margaret's influence. We're not telling anyone in Kevin's family where we're moving except for Lisa and Kevin's father. We've also filed for a more permanent restraining order against Margaret, which will cover our new location as well. I know this might not be the ending some of you were hoping for, but this is where we are. This will likely be my final update. I probably won't be making any new posts after this. I want to thank everyone who has followed our story, sent positive thoughts our way, and offered words of encouragement. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You've helped us stay strong when we felt like giving up. Edit. A lot of people are asking if we're still in contact with Kevin's father and Lisa. Yes, we are. They're the only ones who know where we're moving, and we plan to have them visit once we're settled. Kevin's father is even talking about retiring to our new town once his divorce is finalized. As for Lisa, she's planning to come help us move and get settled. We're so grateful for their support. Jean, who might have been the one to report him, is now married to a newspaper editor. She visits the girls occasionally. As for me, I've settled into life as a kept man, enjoying the peace and quiet, writing, and spending time with my loving wife and our baby. Life goes on.